Over the last couple of years, commodity prices have come down well off their highs. And so every farmer out there is concerned about how do I still make money in the farm? Boy, it's tough with our fertilizer prices and seed prices and our land cost. How am I gonna make this happen? Well, one of the biggest expenses, or as we like to call them, investments on the farm is fertilizer. But let's face it, how much do you really know about fertilizer? Do you know for sure that you're putting on exactly the right amount on every acre of your farm? Well. In order to figure this out, you've got to have data. So what we really encourage you to do is get some good soil sampling done this fall. You can do it very, very easily yourself with this tool right here called a soil probe. So today we want to talk just a little about soil sampling technique, how you can make this happen yourself on your farm. So when you think about soil sampling, many farmers have relied on other people to take samples for them. This is a simple job. So using technology and using GPS, you can easily find points in in the field that you want to go to. But let's face it, many of us know our fields fairly well. Hey, here's the area that always produces very well for me. Here's the area that doesn't produce as well for me. Or here's the hilltop, here's the side hill, and here's the valley. And I've got three different soil types out in the field. It doesn't really matter to me how you set up your field for sampling. Just get a good representative sample from each different type of area that you're going to manage differently. I just had a conversation with the farmer this weekend and he said, all right, I'm, I'm gonna take soil samples for the first time. Should I do grid sampling? Should I do zone sampling? Uh, how many samples do I need to pull in a 160 acre field? And, and I said, well, how many different soil types have you got out there? And he said, "Moy, I've got like seven different soil types across that one quarter section of ground. And I said, how about topography? Do you have many hills and valleys? He goes, oh yeah. And some of them have had some erosion on them and some of the valleys have been washed out over the years before we went no-till. I said, you know, it looks to me like you need to start with grid soil sampling just because there's a lot of variance in the field. I'd probably pull a sample every five acres and start there. And then you can look at what kind of variance there is out in the field based on those soil samples to adjust your program going forward. I will tell you though on our farm where we do have a lot of up and down different soil types everything else we're going to smaller grids two and a half acre grids or we're setting up our own zones that may be based on soil type or based on the yield map but the whole thing is you want to get this set up right now this is the reason why we're talking about this today if you're a corn and soybean farmer chances are your corn and soybeans are not off the field yet so now's the time to do it well you have a chance once you get started with harvest things get busy and and the whole thing is you got to get yourself set up so you're all ready to go. So here's what we suggest. Number one, get a soil probe. They're relatively inexpensive. They do cost about a hundred dollars and you say, oh my goodness, a hundred dollars for that little tool? Well, it's all stainless steel so it's going to last forever. That's the reason why. The next thing is set up your grid points. So you can download the free Ag PhD soil test app, but go to your computer and just go to the website agphdsoiltest.com. So if you do that, then you can set up your fields for free. It doesn't cost you anything. And then you're all ready to go this fall. You get your grid points set. So then using your smartphone in the fall, you can go right to your grid points and you can very quickly pull your soil samples. All right, so let's talk about pulling that sample. So you've got the probe that Brian was talking about. What we'd really like to pull is six inch soil cores going across your field. Now in some areas of the country, they may say, well, we always do eight inch samples or we always do 12 inch samples. Let's face it, if you're raising corn and soybeans, for example, much of that root system is going to be in the top six inches of soil. Most of your fertility in the field is going to be in that top six inches of soil. Six inches is a good place to start. So when we're pulling those samples, it's important that you're going to pull every core at six inches. So many times on the soil probe, we'll see farmers either put a piece of tape or, or draw a line with a permanent marker or uh, possibly even just uh, make a mark with a grinder or something right into the probe where this is how far we go down. And that's the best way to do it. That's what we have on all the soil probes we've ever gotten. We just take the grinder, it just takes a minute, and we just make our six inch mark. Then each time you get to a spot in the field you want to sample, we would recommend taking eight to 10 cores. And then you put all that into one bucket, you mix it up, and then you put a chunk of that into a soil sample bag. So the, Usually, way, so you, the way that you're gonna do this real simply is go out with your four-wheeler or your pickup, and then just walk around the four-wheeler or pickup and pull the eight to 10 cores. Okay, one of the most important things you need to know is this soil probe needs to go straight up and down every single time and exactly to that six inch mark. So as long as you're going straight up and down every single time, you're gonna do just as good as the very best 
soil sampler in the whole country. So don't be thinking that, oh, wow, this is too tough a job. This is a super simple job that any kid can do. You can easily handle this. Anybody on your farm can handle this. So all you want to do is just go out to those grid points, take your probe, go straight up and down, pull eight to 10 cores, dump them in the sample bag, scan it, send it in. All right, so you think about what the cost is going to be for this whole thing. If you're pulling the samples yourself, you eliminate whatever costs there may be there. Perhaps you're not able to. Maybe you're not physically able to get out there and do it. You can hire somebody to do sampling. Generally, it costs a couple bucks an acre. Then you look at what it costs to send those samples in. We like to do a complete soil analysis where we see not only N, P, and K, but we also see all the secondary and micronutrients as well, along with base saturation, cation exchange capacity, soil organic matter. There's a number of factors that we're going to use and talk about through the fall and winter when it comes to getting your soil program in line, getting your fertility program built. So a complete soil analysis costs about $25 to $30. And if you're doing five acre grids, for example, it's going to cost just a little over $5 an acre to do the sampling and get all the information you need. Now you may say, wow, I farm a thousand acres. That's $5,000 for my whole farm. Yeah, it is. But what are you going to spend on fertilizer? You're probably going to spend $100,000, $200,000, who knows, maybe more, depending on what crop you're raising. For a small investment, you can find out exactly how to best invest those fertility dollars on your farm. Yeah, and the big thing is a lot of people aren't sampling every year. Now for us on our farm, if I'm going to make a dramatic change, if it's newer ground and we say, oh wow, I got to make a lot of changes here, I might sample every year for the first three or four years. But after that, it might be every other year, it might be every third year, possibly even every fourth year. So you start dividing this out and you say, well, yeah, it's really not that much money per year that I'm going to invest. But the big thing here is we just want to stress to you, this is a job you can absolutely do. And we talk about $100 an hour jobs all the time. Even the cheapest soil sampler out there, they're typically charging a dollar an acre. If you can do a thousand acres in a day, a 10 hour day, that's a job that pays you $100 an hour. So maybe you don't want to do it, but I'll bet you your kid wants to do it or your grandkid or somebody that you know would love to make $100 an hour. Well, I like those jobs that pay $100 an hour or more. One of those jobs may just be controlling our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 